Third and very, very, very short. And, then, and he's hitting the backfield. He's going to go down. What a play from Timmons. Davis knocks him all the way back to the 29. They'll have to punt the ball. Wingo with one back. Looks over the middle. Wants to throw. He does. Downfield. Intercepted by that Austin State's number 44, Kenny Murphy. The David Dean Show. Your weekly look at Valdosta State University Blazer football. Here's your host, Dick Rocky, along with head coach David Dean, for a look at this week's Blazer football action. Hello and welcome to the David Dean Show. I'm Dick Rocky with the head coach, Valdosta State 33, University of North Alabama 31. One of the more thrilling games, Coach, you could want to be around, probably if you're not a coach. Uh, <laughs> but it, it was just an amazing football night, exciting uh, both teams just, it went, they scored, we scored, they scored, we scored twice, they scored. I mean, it was just unbelievable, the points. They couldn't stop us from running. We struggled to stop their passing. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a flip-flop of what uh, we normally do. We're usually a passing team, and we ran the ball a bunch, and they're usually a running team, and they throw the ball, threw the ball a lot. But uh, it was a great football game, uh, you know, and I think the Gulf South Conference should be proud of, of the representatives that were out there because uh, it represented great football, uh, two slugfests, two teams in a, in a slugfest. And, you know, the amazing thing about it is you finish the year, they beat us by two in the regular season and we beat them by two in the playoffs. So we're even on the year. Well, it, it, it was an exciting game to watch. And, and what was amazing about it, you, you guys set a, a new rushing record. I think that's since 1999, you broke, I think, Arkansas Tech that game. And you had uh, Cedric had a great night. Austin was like 175 or 85 yards and Jake was right at 100 yards. The first time I can remember a long time you had that many guys. We could have had three guys over 100 yards. We very easily could. And, you know, um, at the end of the game, Austin Scott broke into the open field and actually slid down not to allow North Alabama an opportunity to get the football back. And uh, he, he very easily could have scored. And if he did that, he would have gone over 200 yards on the night. And uh, Cedric, you know, was very close to 100. So we were very close to having three guys over 100 yards. And that says a lot for our offensive line and how they played and, and the way our wide receivers were blocking out wide. Because you want to mention, too, you know, we've gone through a whole season. We've gone through all of your seniors who people will see at the end of all our segments and, and their expressions, their emotions <laughs> about things. It's pretty neat. And we're going to do it again. And just it's, it's a fun thing. I think the boys, they got, the guys seem to really enjoy that. <laughs> And uh, so we'll get some guys you've, you've already seen this year. They'll be there again. Well, that's the good thing about making it to the playoffs. And, uh, you know, you, you have an opportunity to, to have repeats for your seniors. So some, you'll see some of these guys. They're quite a character. It's a good group of kids. And, you know, hopefully we're going to play four more games with those guys because uh, they're a special group of guys. All right. We'll uh, be back with your thoughts on the first half. I'm Rodney Hunter, outside linebacker from Miami, Florida. And you're now watching the David Dean Show. Go Blazers. We got off to a good start. They deferred. You had a great run from Cedric and then missed a wide open third down play that would have kept that drive going. Yeah, we had a drop there on third down and uh, you know, forced us to punt into the wind. And, uh, you know, first play of the game, just like they did in the regular season, hit us for a touchdown. And so we quickly go down seven to nothing. And, you know, it was kind of eerie, the start of the game. Yep. You know, it was, very sim it was very similar to earlier. We were down 14 to nothing then. We were down 14 to three early in this game. Uh, but, you know, credit to our kids. They hung in there. They kept fighting. They knew they still had a chance to win. And if we just limited the big plays on defense and forced them to drive, we had a chance to be successful. And that's finally what we started doing is not giving up those big plays. And you responded, responded with a nice drive, had to settle for the field goal with Anthony, and then they come back and score again. And then you come back and score uh, – a touchdown to, t to retake the lead there at the end of the half. Well, it was disappointing. We had a touchdown that was called back on a holding call out wide, and, and so we ended up having to settle for the field goal. So it should have been seven to seven. But again, you know, the, the, those type things didn't bother our football team on that day, and, and that says a lot for them and their maturity and how much they've grown throughout the year. Really proud of the way they responded yesterday. And, you know, I was thinking that. They, they just seem, you know, they're behind, so what? We've been behind before, we'll come back. It just seems that's a great attitude. Yeah, there was no panic on the sideline. Everybody knew that, you know, if we just started playing and, and forcing them to drive the length of the field and making the catches that we needed to and finishing off blocks, we were going to be fine. And uh, for us to take a 17-14 to 14 lead, hold them to no points the rest of that, uh, the rest of that half, said a lot for the way our defense was playing. All right, Coach, let's take a look at the first half. Oh, we're waiting for it. And this game is underway. It's going to be a deep kick. 
And Cedric's going to take an end zone. He'll take a knee, and Blazers will take it. He's got it. He's going to give it inside a big hoe for Austin. It cuts outside to 40. Austin at the 50, all the way down to 45, the 42 yard line. Austin Scott off the left side, a huge hole. Takes the pass, the run, wants to throw deep downfield. He's got a guy breaking open, makes the catch. We're gonna have to chase him down. He's gonna take it the distance. A home run on the first play of the game. Wants to throw. Out the flat, he's got Cedric out there. Cedric stops at the 30. Cedric put a move on him, gets the first down. They jump, we're gonna get a free play. Out here in the flat where DeMonte makes the catch. He's at the 50, at the 45, and gets inside the 45, down about the 43. Gives it to Cedric, a big hole to 25, at the 20, spins off another down to the 15, all the way down to the 11-yard line. And that's there, holds it there. Kicks good. Right through the middle. Now. Wait for the snap, wing goes. They're down, they're second short. He didn't uh, make it, I don't think. He didn't it. get it. He Unless still he falls fight. forward. Uh, it's about, maybe actually lost a little bit. North Valley leads at 7-3. Hands off right side, nowhere to go, and he's going to lose about a yard on that one. 55 to go, they lead at 7-3. Wingo with it, he's just going to waltz in for the touchdown. With it. Austin with it, cuts inside and gets across the 30 short. And, then, and he's hitting the backfield, he's gonna go down. What a play from Timon Davis. With the snap, said that has it. Wants to throw the middle, has the catch, has the first down. Anderson still on his feet, tripped up, still on his feet. He crosses the 40, dives to the 37. First Jake keeps it at the 15, there's the 20, he's the 15 and gets all the way down to the 10 yard line. <laughs> On blitz, on a throw of a slant, with the ball, with the ball, touchdown! Mount Austin State's Chris Anderson. First and ten, we go a handoff, and a good play out there from Mount Austin State. Wants to throw, Wingo does, he's got some pressure, he's forced out of the pocket, Blazers are chasing him, he's nowhere to go, and he's gonna be run out of bounds. Oh boy, what a bad decision. There's a snap, gonna give it, and got some room. Austin at the 20, 25, 30, stops and has a good run, good first down from Van Austin State. Just need about three, four yards here. Nick's gonna keep it, rolls out, throws out in the flat, catch is made, and the first down is made, threw it to the th Thomas Wright, a fullback. Nick with the football, he's gonna keep it this time. He's at the 45, the 40, at the 35, the 30, Jake spins away from a tackle, spins away and gets to the 27 yard line. They're showing the blitz. Austin with it, and no, Jake keeps it and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Going to give it to the runner again, trying to get to the corner. He does, but Duran low, a really good play from Duran. These are 36 yard line. Got to run it, got a little double reverse. No, Timmons got him. He's not going to break it loose, and a whole bunch of Blazers stuff him. Wants to throw, getting pressure, and he's going to go down. One-on-one -on -one coverage out there on the far side. Got to be aware of that. Wants to throw. Of course, looking. Looking. He's going to go down. But he's got him again. Jake wants to throw it. Over the middle. Catch is made. First down is made. And Donovan Bolden gets across the 35 down about to 37. Coach, you go into the locker room with a good lead. I know there's some things that, a lot of things that probably happened that you wanted to address with your team. And what was it like in the locker room with you guys? Well, it was very upbeat, you know, for us to be down 14 to three and then go in with a 17 to 14 lead uh, at the half was, our guys were very confident. They th felt like they were playing very well. Uh, I think we were being more physical than them. And that's what I challenged them to do was continue to be very physical in, in the way that we played. And uh, I think as you see, as the game wore on, uh, we kind of wore them down, which is very unusual for a game uh, against a North Alabama football team. And you know, jump in there, Jake getting his first start in two weeks. Did you feel like he was a little bit rusty there for a few series, or did you just feel like it was Jake? Yeah, you know, I think he was a little bit rusty. I think he resorted back to what he was doing earlier in the year and, and not going through reads and trying to run the football. And they had a great game plan for what they were going to do to take Jake away. They did not rush very hard. 
which was one of the reasons that he was able to stay back in the pocket for so long. But they weren't going to let him run up the middle of the field. They were going to have to. They were forcing him to have to throw and go through reads. And once he finally started doing that, uh, our offense started really moving the ball, especially uh, from the pass game. Our run game was always there, but our pass game really picked up from there. All right, Coach, so you got the lead at the half, and uh, we'll be back and take a look at the second half in just a moment. John McWilliams, I play middle linebacker. I'm from Norcross, Georgia, and you're watching the David Dean Show. Go Blazers. Welcome back to the David Dean Show. Coach, you come out of the locker room, you're going to have to kick off. The win was a factor, and uh, you made a decision to – let them have the uh, wind in the third quarter. Well, we wanted the wind in the fourth quarter. We felt like that was going to be a, a, a big difference in the game towards towards the stretch, you know, especially when you start playing field position and the whole time you're thinking about the 54-yard field goal that he hit to beat us and we wanted to make him do that into the wind if it came down to it. Plus, if we had that opportunity, we wanted the wind with us. So, uh, you know, we were very fortunate. We did not win the coin toss and they, they decided to defer, which played into our hands because that allowed us to have it in the fourth quarter. A lot of scoring in that uh, second half. Six, they uh, we scored 16. They scored 17, and uh, a lot of points put on the board. And it, uh, you know, just it just came down to a lot of things. You know, uh, their quarterback was fantastic the whole night. Uh, created a dropped a fumble though on their two yard line. We recover it, then we give it right back to them. And uh, it was sort of that kind of way. You know, you get that fumble, lose it right back well it was it was punch and counter punch no question about it there were several lead changes in the second half they would they would score and we would respond and then they would score and we would respond and uh you know it was just again it was a great football game it was a great atmosphere their crowd was loud their students were behind us really getting on to us the entire time it, but our our fans you know i can't say enough about them and how good they are they stayed with us the entire time they, they were loud uh, they didn't have the numbers that the North Alabama fans had, but I promise you they were just as loud and they were just as vocal, and that was great for us to have. You know, a, a big moment in the game is when uh, Jake got down there and we, everybody thought he was in, zone, in the end zone, except the officials never gave a call, and their crowd was going crazy, and their players run off the field like they, they knew it was theirs. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we get the touchdown call. And <laughs> yeah, it, it took them a while to unpile everybody, and that's the reason that they did. They wanted to make sure that that ball was across – the line, uh, you know, as, as they unpile. We could see it from our sideline that he had crossed the goal line and then got pushed back, but he still had the ball across, across the line. But, uh, you know, heck of a goal line stand by those guys. You know, we, it, it took everything we had to get in there. Yeah, and Tom Odom's on the sideline. Tom's screaming at me, he's in, he's in. I said, well, Tom, I haven't seen a signal yet, so I, I don't know. He said, he's in. Don't worry about so it. it. It took them a long time, and I thought there for a second that they weren't going to give it to us, but uh, they finally did, which was the right call. Okay, let's take a look at those highlights. It's a, it's a lot of fun to watch, especially since we won it. Fourth quarter, Blazers kicking into the wind. Anthony approaches the short kick, a high kick this time. It's going to be a return from about the 12 at the 20, and it's going to go down short of the 30 to about the 29. And they're going to run it and stopped at the two. Wingo up the middle, and he's... Fumble! We got the ball. Fumble, and we got it. Second down and long. Cedric stops, cuts against the grain. Cedric at the 10, has the first down at the 20, all the way to the 20, still on his feet. He won't go down all the way to the 28. Clock's moving. Blazers lead 17 to 14 in the third. Cedric, no, he, and it's fumbled by Jake, and they I pick it up. At the 35, and he goes down at the 31. Looks left, looks right, and this time Tevin Davis knocks it down. Go, wants to throw it, gets pressure over there, catches made, touchdown is there. Jake, Austin with the ball for the left side, trying to turn the corner. He does it to 45, to 50, to 45 in their territory. Gets down to the crosses of 40, down to the 38 yard line. Jake's going to give it to him. Big hole at the 30, 25, 20, 19. Austin Scott, plenty of time on the game clock. And quarterback sneak and he's in. He he's in. in. Bring that man in motion. Or, or the runner case. They fumble it almost and he falls on. I saw now, the ball bobble. Now that was his head. Shemag going towards the home side of the field. Wing goes rolls out, wants to throw. He does, and there's a touchdown. Snap. Hold. Kick is up and good. It is good from 52 yards. 
Kaminga looking to throw, fourth down the pocket. He's rolling, rolling, throws into the end zone and out of bounds. He drops it and picks it up and then throws it incomplete. Snaps good, holds good. Kick good, so right through there. He's our deep guy right now. Gonna run, now he's gonna keep it. Jake does it to 50. Jake's at 45, the four, almost to the 40. Jake drops back. They're pressuring over the middle. Oh, by him. What a catch, Manners makes a catch at 25, gets it down to the 21. Snap, hold, kick, good. All are good, makes it 31 to 30. Let the clock run. Looks left, throws left, and he's hit right there. Wingo looking, looking, looking. He's going to go down. He loses the football, I think. Did he get it back? He lost the football, and they fell on it, Dick. Jake's going to throw it. Over the middle, slant catch made first down. What a good throw. Jake's going to throw, go downfield again. Caught down there. Donlin stops, spins, gets down to the six-yard line. Snaps there, holds there. The kick is good. right through there. Wingo with one back. Looks over the middle, wants to throw, he does, downfield, intercepted by that Austin State's number 44, Kenny Murphy. Jake with the snap, Austin with the ball at the 35, Austin at the 30, and still, I say don't fight for yardage, he picks up enough to be second and one now for Valdosta State. Final score of Valdosta State, 33 to 31. And coach, I want to mention a couple of plays. Anthony Pastelli, again, a big part of this football game, kicked that 52-yarder with ease. Had a little bit of wind, but it was well past. Well, he, he, hit, he hit it perfect, and, and he did have wind behind him, but uh, he had the leg to get there even without the wind. That was a great kick, and he hit it right down the middle. His four field goals, obviously, were a difference in the ball game, but kind of unsung, you know, great punt there with the wind one time and, and great coverage down there. But also, I think he had four, maybe five touchbacks in the game, and one of those was into the wind. So an outstanding day for Anthony Pastelli. He was a big weapon for us. And defensively, you your guys, again, you, you look at numbers, and you know nobody just jumps out, like I've said all season, just a bunch of guys making tackles and some sacks. And I think we had four sacks and, and some tackles for losses. So well, I, I thought our defensive line played outstanding football. You know, Obviously, they, we held them to 12 yards rushing, which is what they like to do. And uh, they just could not get their run game going. But we put pressure on the quarterback a lot. He got rid of the ball quickly a lot of times where we couldn't get back there. But when he held the ball, we got back there and got on him. And, and Bryson Brindle and, and Tevin Davis and uh, you know Matt Matthews and Cooper Lemons, Micaiah Satterwhite, all of those guys, boy, what an outstanding night they or day they had going back there after them. And then can't say enough about Kenny Murphy and the ma plays that he made yeah. in that run game, especially on one of their sweeps that is a signature play. And he runs a very, very fast running back down and, and tackles him for a six-yard loss. And then obviously comes up with a huge interception at the end of the game. And some guys we never talk about enough, the offensive line, they've been really good all season. I, I don't remember really a holding call on those guys in, you know, at the line of scrimmage in a long time. No, we had two holding calls, and they were both out wide. We had two wide receivers that had holding calls, or maybe three in the game, but uh, you know, they just do an outstanding job. They're, they're, they come off, they're a blue collared work group and uh, they, they play very, very well together. So it was a great win, 33 to 31 for Valos State, gonna move on. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And we'll be back with the Drury Inn and Sweet Scoreboard in just a second. Hi, my name's Matt Matthews. I play offensive line and I'm from Seoul, Korea. And you're watching the David Dean Show. Welcome back to the Drury Inn and Sweet Scoreboard. And Coach, uh, really only one score to give uh, in our Super Region, West Georgia, with a good win, 20-17 to 17 over Tuskegee at Tuskegee. Uh, a close game. They led the whole way at 13 to nothing, I think, at the half. And so they're, they're moving on to Delta State. Well, they are. They have a rematch with Delta State. They beat Delta State earlier in the year. And, uh, you know, it says a lot. You know, we talked about how good the Gulf South Conference is. Three of the four teams left in the uh, regional are – from the Gulf South Conference. And, uh, you know, obviously one of them is going to be in the final uh, between the West Georgia and Delta. Somebody's got to advance. Hopefully we can be the second one going up and uh, beating Lenore Ryan. You know, it's tough to beat Delta State over at Delta State. Uh, West Georgia has had good luck against them, and, and they're apparently playing really well right now. Well, they are, and, and West Georgia's kind of been Delta State's nemesis. They, they never really play those guys very well, and 
Uh, for some reason, they they find a way to, to win that game. I'm sure they're going to be ready. They, they've been rested. They, they weren't challenged the last two games of the year. They played at NAI school, and then they played uh, Mississippi College, and then obviously they were off yesterday. So they've really had a, a long three-week period where their starters probably have not played a full game. And that not really is good normally, I would think, as a coach. <laughs> well, from a player standpoint, it's pretty good. But from a coach standpoint, it's not because when you don't have those those full speed live bullet action going at you, uh, you, you tend to get a little rusty as, as we saw with our quarterback yesterday. We'll be back with the Georgia Farm Bureau look ahead in just a moment. At VSU, we're fired up. We spark intellect on a cool campus. VSU. In a hot college town. We fan the spirit with national championships. Feel your fun side. Valdosta State University, ignite! Welcome back to the Georgia Farm Bureau. Look ahead and coach, uh, we're going to be making our first ever trip to Lenore Ryan. I do want to mention before we get into that, 6,474 miles when you go to Hickory, North Carolina next week and come home. That, that's how much your team and you have traveled <laughs> since we've been on the road since uh, October the 30th. <laughs> Well, I feel like that uh, I'm plastered in a seat in that bus. Uh, we, we've spent a lot of time on the bus, especially over the past four weeks. Yeah. This will be our fifth straight road game, and uh, I think it will be our, our sixth in the last seven weeks. And we've put a lot of miles in, uh, but, uh, you know, our kids enjoy being around each other and going to new places. And we have an opportunity to go play a new team. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's always something that's exciting in the playoffs. It's what I like to do, and I think our players enjoy doing that, is going to play somebody different. And uh, we get to cross over into the South Atlantic Conference and play Nor Lenore Ryan. Lenore Ryan got to the national championship game last year. They're undefeated this year. Uh, they've really had two games that were close. Everything else has been a blowout for them. Uh, it's a running team. They, they've thrown the ball 76 times this year with five interceptions. They got four guys over 600 yards rushing, including one with 1,300. <laughs> so they run that option offense, and, and they're good at it. Well, they're one of the top teams in the country in, in rushing, and, and they do an outstanding job running that option offense. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a challenge for us. We, we face some option teams during the year, but uh, not to this caliber. These guys are in a different league. They did go to the national championship last year and got beat by Northwest Missouri, so they understand the playoff run. They know how to do that. And uh, it's going to be a great challenge for us, and especially for us making another road trip and then also playing in a new place. Uh, it's going to be something that we're going to have to get uh, accustomed to very, very quickly. And who knows what the weather's going to be like. I heard they had snow there last week. Oh, great. <laughs> well, we've, we've been to Minnesota, I think, for yeah, snow, too. Yeah, we've played in the snow before. The guys like it, actually, I yeah. think, to be around that cold weather. But uh, it is a team that likes to run the football. Looking to defensively, they they appear to be really pretty good there too. Well, they are. You know, one thing that their defense is not out on the field very much because their offense holds the ball for so long. So, f from an offensive standpoint, we've got to be able to convert every single drive that we we do. Uh, we we can't afford any missed drives. And if you get behind on these guys, you you can you're going to be in for a long day because they will not give the ball back to you. They control the clock so well. And conversely, if we can get a lead quickly and get a big lead and force them to have to throw the ball, obviously 76 times through an 11-game period, they don't throw it very much. We're putting them in an uncomfortable zone, so hopefully we can do that. And the final question is, you've played a couple of option teams. You said, is, is this the best option team that you will face, you think? I would think so, uh, you know, without watching them uh, intently yet, I would think so just because of their record and how many yards they're putting up. And then virtually everybody that they've had last year is back, you know, for those guys. Uh, I would say this is probably going to be the best and most uh, – most the offense is going to have the, the most uh, weapons around the entire team that, that we're going to be able to face. And finally, Coach, just to comment, Jamie Abbott, who does the video for, for your show, uh, he goes on that D state, uh, D2 webpage all the time, and he said, we got some compliments. He said people were talking about the playoffs and people outside of our region, actually, and there's, they were saying, if Valdosta State gets in there, that's the team we worry about the most because <laughs> you guys have proven over the years when you get into the, to the playoffs, uh, we, 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 your teams have been very, very good at it, and it's nice to know that people recognize that. Well, it is, and, and that is a compliment to our football players and the way that they play. But 
again, I'll say it all along, you know, playing that tough schedule early on, sometimes you don't always finish up 11-0 and 10-0, and and but you're battle tested if you can get into the playoffs, and that's what we want to do. We want to be battle tested when we get to this part of the year. All right, Coach, congratulations on a great win there against North Alabama, our, one of our biggest rivals in the Gulf South Conference forever. Uh, the kickoff, I understand, in Hickory, North Carolina, Saturday is at 12 noon, and you'll be able to listen to that uh, if you go to vstateblazers.com and you can, uh, you'll see a, a little option there to click on and listen to the game. And they'll probably be webcasting it also, so you might want to check that if you want to watch the football game. So for the head coach, David Dean, I'm Dick Rocky. Have a great week.